An initial diagnostic laparoscopy is done looking at the liver, the small bowel and the colon. The sigmoid colon is completely released from its congenital additions as well as the peritoneal attachments to the lateral pelvic wall. This can be done at the beginning of the surgery as we are doing in this case or at the completion of the mobilization of the left colon and splenic flexure. However, a complete mobilization of the peritoneal attachments of the sigmoid is essential to do uh, tension-free extracorporeal anastomosis. Once the sigmoid colon is completely freed from its lateral attachments, you can appreciate the gonadal vessels, the iliac vessels, the iliopsoas muscle and the left ureter covered by a layer of retroperitoneal fascia. The incision on the lateral peritoneum is then extended cranially from the sigmoid onto the descending colon up till the splenic flexure. But no lateral to medial dissection is done, only the peritoneal fold is incised and the splenic flexure and the descending colon will be mobilized from medially to laterally as we do for a right colon mobilization. The omentum is displaced upwards into the supracolic compartment. The splenic flexure of the colon is lifted up to create a tenting and prominence of the left colic vessels. The peritoneum above and below the left colic vessels is incised to enter the loose areolar tissue in the plane between the retroperitoneal retro fascia and the colonic mesentery. You can clearly appreciate the white line of told there which guides the plane of dissection. This avascular space is easily developed by a combination of blunt and sharp dissection. As we continue this plane of dissection laterally at the level of the splenic flexure, we see the bluish tinge of the lower polar spleen covered by the peritoneum. Likewise, as we progress with the medial to lateral dissection at the level of the descending colon, pushing the retroperitoneal fascia down. We join this plane to the lateral peritoneum that has already been incised.
once the descending colon has been freed we turn our attention to the cranial dissection the peritoneum of the transverse mesocolon is incised and the dissection proceeds cranially here as we proceed we encounter the body and the tail of the pancreas at this point in the superior dissection a mistake which we can easily make is getting into the retropancreatic plane as we do in the right colon mobilization where we stay anterior to the duodenum and avoid going retroduodenally likewise in this part of the dissection we avoid going in, going into the retropancreatic plane and stay anterior to the pancreas if we enter the retropancreatic plane which may easily be a common mistake for the beginners we would not just be in the wrong plane but risk injury to the splenic and the renal vein the transverse mesocolon attachment to the inferior border of the pancreas is divided and the lesser sac is entered as we proceed from medial to lateral in this fashion the peritoneal attachment on the anterior surface of the inferior border is of the pancreas is free and the retroperitoneal attachment of the splenic flexure is also divided at the splenic flexure sometimes the tail of the pancreas may reach till the splenic hilum and may get lifted up during the traction here it is very important to avoid any injury to the tail of the pancreas that completes the medial to lateral dissection now the left colic vessels are cleared of the peritoneum and the fibro fatty tissue and doubly clipped and divided at the origin another proximally arising first sigmoid branch from the ima is also being clipped and divided this helps us make the uh, descending colon specimen easily mobile facilitating its retrieval through the extracorporeal incision and anastomosis the linocolic ligament is divided the lateral and the medial planes of dissection are joined to complete the separation of the splenic flexure and the descending colon from the retroperitoneal gerotus fascia the pancreas and the lower pole of the spleen the transverse colon also from the level of the mid transverse colon till the splenic flexure is dissected free from its omental attachments so that it can be easily delivered into the midline wound
the completed left colon mobilization. You can appreciate the tumor at the splenic flexure with the large umbilication on the tumor surface. The specimen is delivered out through a midline wound with a wound protector and a stapled anastomosis is performed extracorporeally. Adequate lateral sigmoid mobilization is very important for this part of the operation so that the distal segment of the colon can be delivered into the abdominal wound.